Shifting Communities ex Exhibition Series at the Bronx River Arts Center highlights the initiatives in culture and the arts that are currently instilled in American society. One of the goals is to bring together different cultures in the hopes of strengthening the artistic community. This Thursday, there will be two roundtable discussions as part of the exhibition series, featuring several guests, including our executive director, Michael Max Nabi, and Grammy nominee, Bobby Sanabria. Here to tell us more is Bill Aguado of the Bronx Music Heritage Center. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So we were discussing music. Um, I know I mentioned uh, a documentary series, but can you take me through the history of music over the last 30, 40 years here in our borough? Well, if you look at the, the social history, the cultural history of the Bronx, you know, we're most noted for the Bronx is burning. What I see underneath that stereotype that still persists today across the country, wherever I go, in Europe, what have you, and it's so unfair to the people who live in the Bronx, you have this element of culture, this element of the arts called music that has evolved, that spoke to its community, that documented, that chronicled the history of the struggles. And those two items, those two music genres are Latin jazz and hip hop. And hip hop, uh, especially hip hop, which we also do on another round table on January 4th at Bronx Art Place, uh, strictly for hip hop, you see how it, is, how it evolves into an African American, and how it evolves into a West African, how it evolves into a Latino, how it evolves into various hybrids. The same with Latin jazz. Latin jazz, 30 years ago, the Bronx was largely uh, largely Puerto Rican as a Latino community. Mm -hmm. Now we have numbers of Dominicans, Mexicans, Central Americans, and South Americans. Each brings their own rhythm. As well as you integrate the Afro-Caribbean, you bring all those rhythms together, you have extraordinary hybrids that manifest itself in, in Latin jazz as well as hip hop. Latin jazz is a very big umbrella. Can you describe what encompasses Latin jazz? Well, it's, if my toe taps, then it's happening, you know? <laughs> no, it's basically a toot rebeat. It's a basic Afro-Cuban beat. Okay. And like I was mentioned before, I just came back from Cuba, and I was struck by the connection between the music in Cuba and its evolution here, in, especially in the Bronx, and how it manifests itself and how it has expanded and incorporated other other uh, cultures and uh, Spanish-speaking countries. This is what's going to be part of the Bronx Music Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. Not to forget our heritage, our music. We know who the superstars are. We, kn we know the Africa Bambadas, we know, we know the Tito Puentes, but who are the musicians that played with them? Who are the composers? Who are the arrangers? Who are the club owners? Who, who has been the audience? Those are the people, those are the voices we need to document. What I have coming Thursday are voices, not about the history of Latin jazz, but when they began in the Bronx as a Latin jazz enthusiast to now, mm -hmm. what have they seen? What have the changes seen? What, what have been the, very, the changing demographics? This is all about cultural equity. We need our voice, and our voice is not there in many ways in, in contemporary society. Our, we don't receive the adequate enough funding to do our, our program. But this is one step in the right direction. Why do you think that the Bronx has been a great breeding ground for musical talents and musical geniuses? Well, largely because the Bronx has been the place where people of color have been sent. You know, it's, we can't live in, in Manhattan in certain places. You couldn't live in Brooklyn in certain places. You certainly couldn't live in Staten Island or, or Queens. And for the most part, the 16th con Congressional District, Congressman Serrano's district, is where most immigrants have, have first come and made their homes in the Bronx. That's the incubator. Then it evolves. And, you know, uh, and, you know it's for some people, it's going to the North Bronx or a co-op city. For some, it's heading to the suburbs. But you come to the South Bronx, you establish yourself, 
create a home, create a, uh, an incubator for your family, and then you start moving forward. And music is that language. Music, don't look at music as a rhythm, just, a, just as a ripple, but think of music as a language that talks to our generations, talks to our neighbors, talks to ourselves, each other. I mean, how, how often do you wake up humming a tune and, you know, it's a tune, <laughs> you know, or, or you or even ride the subway, you know, it goes back and forth. It's a rhythm there. Just Music recognize is a rhythm. It's a rhythm, and those threads, how do we connect those threads? And that's the Bronx Music Heritage Center, and that's El Elemental on Thursday. That's what I was going to say. Can you tell me more about this panel? Um, aside, we know Bobby Sanabria Bobby's and Michael Max will be there. Michael Max. Who else will be sitting on this uh, panel? Elena Martinez, who is a folklorist. Al Quinones, who who with a, a group of community people restored 52 Park in the South Bronx and for 30 years have been putting on some of the, the baddest Latin jazz in the summer, it was a summer concert for 30 years. <laughs> and uh, Angel, a Angel Rodriguez, a South Bronx uh, timbales player, major percussionist, and also a historian of music in the South Bronx. He grew up in the South Bronx. Uh, he's, you know, he knows, he, he knows the street corners, he knows the stoops, and, and <laughs> you know, it's, and, and Bobby, you know, when I, f when I first came to the Bronx in the arts in the late 70s, he, Bobby was a young man, and I was a young man, and I, c Bobby did one of my first summer concerts, and, uh, on, it was on Burnside Avenue, <laughs> toward the joint down, and now, <laughs> and now Bobby is, you know, uh, is, well, a, is a professor of music at Manhattan School of Music, and, you know, it's, we take our assets and use them to promote, to grow, to spread the word. It's, and I, and basically what I want each of them is, and then the theme begins with Casa Amadeo. Mike Amadeo has had his music store in the South Bronx <laughs> for what seems like hundreds of years. It's a landmark. It's a cultural landmark, not necessarily a physical landmark, but in many ways it is a physical landmark because everybody goes there. So at the time you began to connect to, you, you realized that Cass Amadeo existed. Mike Amadeo, he is the wonderful composer, musician, ethnomusicologist, bon vivant, you name it. Once you recognize him, that's the starting point. Now I went from Bobby, who knows that, up to here. It builds a web. It, it's like this web, this connection, and everyone's connected everyone's through Everyone's connected to him. So I want to know what it was like in their communities uh -huh. when they started and, and where they are now and what is the difference between 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, and now. So this panel will be taking place this coming Thursday, yeah, the, 20, the 22nd Seven. of December, mm -hmm. and we're at? It's going to be a Bronx Art Space, 305 East 140 Street in the South Bronx. Okay. And uh, it'll be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it's going to be pretty hip. Okay, and if anyone's interested in attending, it's free, open to the public? It's free and open to the public. And, and sign up with us because there'll be more dialogues like this coming. Because we did the Celia Cruz dialogues. We did, you know, Living Legends. So it's all about remembering our roots staying close to our roots and and creating new legacies because Bobby is a legacy now and he's creating his legacies as is Al Quinones as a community leader and musicologist. We all create legacies. We got to document that. That's our history. That's who we are. Creating